Hi everyone, Sajid Amit here and welcome to another review. So this review is interesting for me because uh, I want to discuss uh, three of my favorite entry-level headphones and I think a lot of you watching will want to decide which one you do want to get. Do you want to get the Sundaras? Do you want to get the HD650? A very famous headphone and of course an equally famous headphone, the HD600. And in this review I want to take you through my impressions on all three very iconic headphones well this is yet this is like a modern legend i don't think it's iconic yet to the sundara anyway without further ado just to jump into the background information in case any of you are interested so the hd 600 came out the earliest among these three uh this came out in 1997 and it's still recognized as one of the best sounding entry to mid-level headphones uh it is a high impedance headphone it, it has an impedance of 300 ohms and uh, sensitivity of i think 102 decibels the 650 is similar. Uh, it came out after the 600. It was meant to be an upgrade. Uh, it's an equally famous headphone, and uh, it has a similar uh, sort of impedance and sensitivity. And finally, the Sundar was released more recently by Hyphaman, and it's already become a modern classic. It's not as high impedance as uh, the uh, dynamic drivers are. So yeah, of course, it's a planar mag magnetic headphone, and the other headphones are dynamic drivers, and which has a lot of implications, which I'm not going to fully get into today. But of course, uh, I'll touch upon some of the tonality traits and, and perhaps even technical performance traits that, you know, they're uh, very different driver technologies lend them or refer to them. And finally, uh, just a disclaimer that this is a loaner unit from this audiophile store Gears for Ears. And uh, uh, this is something I own myself and I'm, I've owned this for the longest, the HD650. And I think about selling them, but, you know, I keep uh, deciding then not to. And the HD600 was my own, but I have sold it and then brought it back for this review. In any case, to start with aesthetics, build and comfort. Comfort first, which that's really important to me. Aesthetics are what they are. Uh, in terms of comfort, I honestly think that the Sennheiser headphones are more comfortable. Uh, the, six, the Sundar is not a particularly uncomfortable headphone, but I still think that it's, um, it's okay. It has a bit of a clamp force. Uh, feels very metallic. Uh, this is made of plastic and it's super light, the HD650, as is the HD600. They're very comfortable, I think. They have a bit of a clamp force of the box, and uh, but over time the clamp force wears off. And because they're light and these pads are very cushiony, I feel that you know these are actually legendary for their comfort. And I talk about, I keep talking about the weight of these headphones. These are actually a very, very, very comfortable um, 260 grams, if I'm not mistaken, which is so light when you when you consider. Odyssey headphones can be as high as 700 grams. Now, in terms of aesthetics, uh, it's evident uh, these have very different aesthetics. This is a newer aesthetic, perhaps, in many ways. Uh, I find all of them pretty attractive to look at. Uh, this is mostly made of metal, the Sundara, whereas the 600 and the 650 are mostly plastic with some metal thrown in. But I don't mind the plastic. And, and for my money's worth, in terms of aesthetics, build, and comfort, I feel... The 650 and the 600 are more eye-catching and that's perhaps because you know they have an iconic status in my mind and you know i just love how they look you can see the drivers the grill mesh um, and what have you but this is also pretty good to look at i think uh, in terms of build of course like i said uh, these have famous build quality uh, i did have a, an issue with one hd 650 but you know that's what it is but overall they're famous for being very very durable and I think that is worth mentioning. Whereas the Sundars, I think, have okay durability. I mean, they're fine. There's nothing wrong with the Sundars. And uh, uh, yeah. Now to get into the music or the music performance when it comes to music, uh, parts that I'm perhaps more interested in talking about. Tonality. So what do these sound like? And I think that what you find is that these two actually sound very similar. And this will not be a surprise to many of you who have at least read about these headphones or seen other reviews. Um, so why do I say that? So first of all, all three are different takes on neutral, so to speak, but they're all neither are. So, I mean, if, if I have to sort of summarize my impressions on tonality, this is perhaps the most neutral headphone among these three uh, with some treble energy. But I'll get into that. Nothing to worry overly about. The 650 is the warmest of all three. This has a mid-bass hump. 
a relative roll off in upper treble, uh, uh, especially lower treble, as a matter of fact, and, and pretty non fatiguing. So I want to say that this is overall what I would call a warm, a neutral to warm headphone. Uh, this is slightly less warm than, than the HD 650 and has slightly more upper mid and lower treble energy, which gives it a slightly more clarity. Neutral, like I said, but now to dive deeper into how each of the each of these headphones fare. Well, in terms of bass, uh, uh, bass, they all perform fine. I think the HD 650 has more bass energy than the 600. Very noticeable in bass heavy tracks. Uh, uh, this will hit harder also now, which is a result of the base of bass energy as well. Uh, this has a pretty linear bass, which is impressive because again, this is something that planars usually do very well at. Uh, the linearity of bass so yeah this has good bass but not outstanding by any means this is good bass i think um uh, moving on to mid-range the mid-range on the 600 is very accurate it's for it's it's resolving uh, for its price point it's natural very lifelike vocals a lot of people call this the vocal master of all headphones and perhaps with very good reason uh, uh, the vocals are a bit forward, which is a very interesting trait of these two headphones. This also has forward vocals, but slightly warmer vocals, and I, I want to say wetter vocals. Um, a lot of people buy or hold on to these Sennheiser headphones for their vocal performance only, which is saying a lot, right? And I know people who prefer the vocal performance of the 650 and the 600 over, let's say, a Focal Clear even. So yeah, they're very popular for being vocal masters, and like I said, this is... Uh, slightly lusher in vocal uh, uh, sort of presentation. The Sundara has a highly resolving mid-range for its uh, uh, price range and overall a fantastic tonal balance, as you'll see. Uh, and I do want to say that, uh, and I don't want to get into technical technicalities right away, but I do want to say that these do vocals fairly well as well. And and what it might lack in, let's say, the lushness or even the wetness, if I may, if I may say, this more than makes up in terms of detail retrieval when it comes to vocals. Uh, treble. Treble is interesting because I feel like people respond differently to treble. And if you are looking or considering these headphones, there's a very good chance you might be treble sensitive. If that's the case, then I think the HD 650 is for you. This has the most treble roll off compared to all these three headphones. The 600, like I said, has more energy in the lower treble, which gives it a certain clarity, which I personally like a lot. Uh, the treble presentation here is, I think, more to my liking than the 650s, which I find rolled off, and a lot of people call this the Sennheiser Veil. And if you perceive a veil, I think the 650 has more of a veil than the 600 does. When it comes to treble, I think the Hyphenman Sundara is extraordinary. It's It's got great, great air, great energy in the air frequencies. It's got a present uh, a treble region overall. So what that means is, I think that you see the sound is sharper. Uh, because it's not as forward in vocals, but but it still has treble energy, and again it has energy in the air frequencies. Uh, the Sundara can come off as relatively bright if you are abing from the 650 or 600 to the Sundara, or if you have the wrong source pairing, a source pairing which perhaps makes this brighter than it really is. With the right source pairing, I think this is fantastic, and I think towards the end of this discussion or this review, I will talk about uh, source pairings. Um, let's get into technical performance since tonality is important and I, th I do think it's extremely important but I think we also spend money when we do uh, in order to get a certain technical performance from each headphone we buy. Decent technical performance on, on, on uh, the 600. If you talk about detail retrieval I think it fares well. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly detailed headphone for its price point as is the HD650. However, I think when it comes to detail retrieval I want to say that this is far superior. I, I, I perceive more background uh, uh, sort of uh, instruments, more um, nuances, uh, trailing edge of notes, uh, even very minute details like details you pick up in the environmental, uh, in, in terms of environmental cues and, and those sorts of things with the Sundara. As a matter of fact, I think this is perhaps the most detailed headphone, sub $500, and, and I highly recommend this if you are a detail hound like I can be. Um, next up is speed and dynamics. Now, planars have a way of uh, 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 handling transients better, uh, usually. Of course, it can vary from one headphone to the other. So I, I do think this is uh, a faster headphone in terms of trans transient response uh, compared to the 650 and the 600. Uh, however, 
I do think in terms of uh, uh, sort of the macro dynamic, which is a sense of slam and punch and the treble uh, or, you know, sort of higher frequency incisiveness. Uh, so that could be how, you know, sharp a drum attack hits or, or, or a drumstick hits, or that could even be the sort of the attack of a piano note. Uh, uh, so I think overall, if you, if you look at macro dynamics, I think they're all comparable. I, uh, a lot of people think that this is uh, better than the AG650 600 in terms of macro dynamics, but I think they're comparable. I think speed is where it actually outshines the other two. Staging and imaging, you might know this or might not know this. That if, when it comes to staging and imaging, uh, 650 and 600 are not your, gonna be your go-to headphones. They're very in your head. Uh, a lot of people have said this before me and it's true that the sound stage is very sort of in your head. There's a sort of center image, a three blob sort of a structure and you have a right image and a left image. That's about it. This actually has decent, fairly decent sound stage for a headphone at its price point. And imaging wise, I think, again, this is way better. And I think because of the clarity and because of also its frequency response and it's more higher levels of treble energy in the lower treble, uh, images are more sharp and more precise. And this is a feature of high feminine headphones that I really like. Now to talk about timbre, this is another easy one, I think. So this has decent timbre. There's nothing wrong with this timbre. But the 650 and the 600 have legendary levels of timbre. As a matter of fact, I think, um, you know, even higher end headphones, like you have to go really high end, like let's say at least a, up to a ZMF uh, headphone in the 1500 ish dollar range to get the sort of timbre that these headphones provide and very famously so. So I think, you know, these headphones have a lot of emotional, emotional association with them precisely because of the vocals and the timbre. And I know I'm sort of throwing a lot of information at you, but at the end of this review, if you keep watching, I'll summarize all this and I'll give you final impressions of what this means for me. And I'll even talk about my listening session in the morning today. So you have a sense of, you know, how I feel about it as I review this. Now, in terms of amp pairing, so the Shenheiser headphones are, are can be amp picky. Uh, they can be driven off any head, a lot of different headphone amps, to be honest. Uh, if you want to talk about a budget headphone amp, you can drive this off an IFI Zendak and a Zencan, uh, and this will work well. If you talk about a portable solution, you can drive it off an IFI hip deck and and uh and you'll get a decent performance and a, and a lot of fun it's actually a lot of fun especially with the bass boost on now but if you want to sort of see the scale this scales a lot if you pair this with an otl a tube amp uh i i feel what you'll see will surprise you because you'll see the scale a lot and also this this will come alive in terms of fits and the sound stage improves it becomes uh, uh the vocal lushness is more apparent and and yeah it's it's a it's it's a trip and it's a wonderful experience i think uh, this, on the other hand, is not as picky in that sense. Uh, this does scale as well. I've tried this with higher end amps like the JSX Mini. And th that amp, I think, is you know four times the price of this headphone and more, much more. Uh, and this really scaled on the JSX Mini. It, the, the bass improved and this overall became a very dynamic headphone. So I do want to say that because this is a planar, it will, it will also scale. Contrary to popular opinion that only the Sennheiser scale at this price range, I think the Sundar can also scale. Um, so that's basically uh, uh, what I have for you. But I do want to summarize this and sort of talk about what I mean, what this all means. So if I have to pick a headphone, first of all, between the 650 and the 600, uh, I, I, I think I have traditionally liked the 650 more. But uh, in my most recent experiments with these headphones, I think the 600 is a more preferable headphone for me. Because I felt that in a lot of complex tracks, because these have very in your head sound stage, very, very narrow sound stage. The 650 can sound cluttered, whereas because of its frequency response and greater clarity, because of its, you know, higher levels of upper mid range and lower treble energy, this will sound clearer. And I used to prefer the fact that this had a slightly more bass energy than a 600 did. Uh, uh, so, uh, but I think I've gotten around, I've gotten used to, uh, I, one can get used to the bass on this. It's, it's not, bad it's not as perhaps as energetic as 650 but it's not bad at all um so yeah so i think if i had to choose between these two headphones i'll choose the hd 600 however if i have to choose the hd 6 between the hd 600 and this hyphen sundara my choice would be the hyphen sundara and that's because all said and done like sure these headphones these shenizer headphones have magical vocals and all that but when i was abing these two I can promise you that I was hearing more details on the Sundara, on the vocals, and that also made up for the fact that perhaps it wasn't as wet and lush as AG600 vocals. This was faster, the bass was snappier, the bass had higher quality because of its overall speed, 
uh, had better sound stage and when it comes to treble performance i love my music to have air like i want to hear air around the instruments i want to hear air from the vocalist's voice and so forth and i think overall uh, this is one of the best headphones for that sort of frequency range and also for clarity at its price point and granted that there are one or two impressions that this can be bright but i do think that this is worth the investment and a longer term sort of engagement with because what happens with headphones that i think offer you so much detail and so much clarity that especially when you're a being or coming off the 650 or 600 um, you need to give this headphone more time it's a highly technical headphone and it's very reminiscent of higher end headphones and in many ways i think if you were thinking of an upgrade to let's say a higher price bracket like let's say a focal clear or high Aria, uh the sundara is more reminiscent of higher end headphones because of its technical performance and tonality even so yeah so i mean these are great flavor headphones which is wonderful music has to be flavorful because it is a, you know uh, we consume music the way we consume a whole lot of things that are you know have sensory appeal uh but that said if you are one of those audio files is trying to get the most out of a mix it pays to i think invest in a sundara and give it time and find the right amp bearing so it's driven well and what might seem a tad bright to you now might not if you give it time and and like with anything and, and you can get used to a certain amount of treble energy and it's by no means like a very bright headphone it's not uh but i think one can appreciate treble energy over time and this is one of those headphones so overall, all these headphones are fantastic, but if I had to pick one, uh, the Sundara would get my highest recommendation among the three. That's it for this review, and stay tuned, and subscribe, and please hit the like button, and uh, in the future videos, I'll cover more headphones that I like, and that I think might be of interest to you. With that, stay safe during COVID, and yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.